So go ahead and tell me the name of the park and the overall theme. Well, first, thanks, Swag. Um, this is Revelations of Stonehenge. Um, this park is set in space, obviously. Um, story starts out with five explorers. They're, they take a little... Uh, they're looking at Stonehenge, checking it out, and uh, they decide to stay overnight, and they wake up and realize that they are no longer on Earth anymore, and that they're now suspended in space along with Stonehenge and uh, three parts of the world that are constructed and uh, reconstructed in various ways. Yeah, this is really cool. I noticed while looking at this, is this sort of like a time warp of this building? Like, going through time, or is it just three different buildings? What's going on here? It is a time warp. It starts out kind of deconstructed, and then as you get closer towards the main island, you can see the full picture. Yeah, that's really cool. So there's like a story to these islands. Okay, so do you want to start here, going over this island? Yeah, we could do this one. I was hoping to do Japan first, but if oh. you want to do Europe, that is cool as well. Look at that. The easiest pie. We're back at Japan. Yeah, so like uh, like in this one here, you can kind of see the pagoda. Um, not only is it being constructed, but there's a snowstorm coming in, and, and everything starts to freeze over. Oh, yeah, that's really cool. Okay. I thought these were different until you pointed that out. These are all the same pagoda. Dude, this is insane. The amount of details to make it look like it's just like a floating mass. Looks great. It was definitely something that I struggled a lot with at first. Um, because at first it kind of looked like three disconnected land masses. And I think it was Jens who pointed that out. So I kind of had that in the back of my mind. I'm like, how can I really you know sell that this is uh this is in space and that they're they're floating islands and not just separated islands so we've got a couple coasters on this island are they all japanese models or are they you know what you wanted them to be the heartline's definitely uh japanese and took a little bit of a uh, uh, inspiration from a uh, steel brew and the line that you guys have in there i think mine's a little bit different of a layout i don't know if you have the yeah yours the is, yeah yours is just a little different yeah okay yeah there's a there's that there's the schwarzkopf style looper it's kind of similar to that one that dives underwater in japan but i wasn't really able to figure out how to get that one to work without it kind of looking a little out of place with the water but oh, um wow, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a little repelling ride there at the very top. That's very class action worthy, but definitely wanted to include something there. And then we got, okay, hold on one sec. I might have to edit this in the recording. My computer's freaking out. <laughs> your, oh, no. Your thing's too awesome. Hold on. Okay, it settled down. Okay, so we're good. I don't know if it froze for you guys on the stream or not, but it was like stuttering. So okay, it was just like one or two. Okay, so this is a big mountain. Uh, what's going on back here? So there's a rappelling ride right there, and the guests rappel down the mountain. That's really and uh, and they get off at the bottom. It's a very class action worthy ride right there. I was going to say, I'm watching this ride, and then I see up here in the top, there's people just spinning around. <laughs> a little so, samurai training going on over there. So it's like space rings, but you're doing samurai training? Yep. That's really cool. Thanks. And then we yeah, have a, a junior coaster. Yeah, I had to put a, had to put a kitty coaster in somewhere just to kind of bounce the lineup, get a Hit all the notes, get, you know, some Junior Coaster, Family Woody, more intense Schwarzkopf Looper, and then the, the two real big thrilling coasters. But, yeah. Okay, think, where are we uh, going next? Well, let's go ahead and go to Africa. We'll skip over that giant-looking castle, and we'll go straight to Africa. Okay, kind of want to start over here. Are these telling a story that I am not aware of? Yeah, it kind of starts out with like a little island, like a little, you know, rainforest or savanna style forest. And then settlers start coming in and then they uh, construct 
a little hut, and that's kind of the central theme with the opening area. Got some uh, some little yuts or yurts, I think. Is there a little dance ceremony going on over here? It's a drum circle, but yeah, something like that. They're all in a maze, right? It's an invisible maze. That's why they're all dancing and jumping. So those, the people jumping, there is a maze there, but I wanted to name people. So after different musicians who were pretty involved with African music. So those are all entertainers. They're just all patrolling that perimeter and they're not really oh. stepping out. That's great. That's a really cool detail. Oh, I like the hanging like lights or decorations, whatever you want to call these. It's a really neat detail. I forget who did that first. I can't quite remember, but I had to put it in there. It's too good not to, mm -hmm. to lift. And this is a very convincing little uh, village. Uh, not a lot of times have I seen these curved walls from, I, I'm looking at expansion pieces, just have not seen these been used, and it looks really good. I think the palette really makes these pieces usable. For sure. Um, Mulpi is just a master with palettes and color. And uh, when you recolor those pieces, you can really just get a lot of good stuff out of them. Got a lovely little village. Those look like, they look like pretzels, but what are they? What are these little objects we're looking at? Those are TNT stacks. Whoa. They kind of, if you get rid of the bottom part and you just color the top part, you can kind of get like some meat or apples or whatever you're trying to sell. That's great. Okay, let's look at the coaster. So what is it called? Listening Wind. Listening Wind. And then you got your really cool station. Then it goes up into here. This is a really, really well themed. And it looks great with these giant buildings. I try to keep a I try to keep the coasters in general. I mean, this is a fantasy park, of course, but I always try to keep my coasters grounded in reality. I want to build something that you would expect B&M to build or something that, you know, Intamin would try to make, not necessarily going too crazy with the layouts and to the point where there's like, oh my gosh, this is a murder machine. Yeah, no, this feels really realistic. And uh, I do like the details. I like the double thickness at the top of this area because... I'm I'm assuming in real life the track's a little bit thicker on the brake sections and the lift. Yeah, I think so too. I I've seen that trick a couple of times, um, probably with Dirk Link and his uh, tutorials. But yeah, it's always a nice little touch to put on the the lift hill. So the next thing that caught my eye, we've got a splash boats ride that like cuts through the ground and then comes out at the bottom, and then you've got this giant building. Are they connected? The ride in the big monument or is this just its own thing i think the only thing that connects it is the splash boats um the coaster does not i don't think the coaster interacts too much with it but the, the splash boats do go into the, the palace but they start a little bit earlier the main station's a little bit further back over here okay yeah is this one of the monuments because i believe for the parks they needed a monument or a do you just have another monument somewhere else that we're going to see later? This is, I guess you could say this is one of the world wonders. It's an ancient palace. There's some, I was looking at a couple of reference images and then I, once I got the general style, I just went ahead and freehanded the whole thing. That's really impressive. I like the blue roof. Looks really cool. This might be my favorite building in the park back here. It looks like a modern like hotel or Airbnb in Africa. <laughs> What's going on it is. back here? So if you if you go look up the observatory in South Africa, it's an actual building. It, it's this is basically what it looks like, and you can stay overnight and in an actual observatory in the mountains in South Africa. So yeah, this is a uh, as close as I could get it. It looks really good. I just immediately recognize like, oh, this could be somewhere you stay, and like an elephant walks up to your building. But yeah, <laughs> I'm now seeing these birds flying around. That's a really cool way to give more uh natural ambiance to the park that's really cool well the the elephant walking up maybe i'll put that in for any designs so i'll i'll have some gorillas going up to the, <laughs> the hotel there yeah and then we got some like disconnected islands it looks like most of your islands are super far like detached but you've got like these little ones with bridges was there a reason you connected them or were you just like no this is more of a whole unit 
Yeah, I try to keep the I try to keep some of the islands like interactive, where like the guests could you know walk through the islands rather than just having them all super disconnected. I want to push the marketplace back just a little bit further, have a little bit more uh, vibrancy to that. Looks really good. And then all this little crunchy detail around is just I'm imagining objects using the invisible colors and and uh, other palette pieces to give your land so much texture. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, invisibility tricks there. Um, there's a couple with like the car ride or I think it, it might be either the car ride or the Virginia reel. But there's also a few. Um, there's also a few with like the um, the mammoth fence pieces. There is some of the dusting you can actually do with the bushes if you like go to the standard bushes and just make the bush invisible. Yeah, you can see that right there. Um, little things like that. You can kind of if you just stack enough stuff, you can kind of get some land texture out of it. That's really cool. And I'm wondering if there's stuff you can do in a more typical palette too, because that that intrigues me in future builds. That's for sure. Possibly, for sure, the palette does help. So now we've got bridges connecting the African area to it looks like the European area. So yep. this is the European area. That is correct. This is a the World Wonder, of course, is the. The castle of archangels but it is themed to a europe oh wow european okay. setting we'll get to that later i see a wooden coaster what's this wooden coaster all about this is a family woody and it has something kind of bounces the lineup and a uh, pretty simple layout nothing too wild but i wanted to get a diagonal lift hill up for one at least one of my attractions yeah it looks good looks like it flows well and yeah, it has a great layout, great speed. And I love these buildings. They all look a li like just different from piece to piece. It doesn't feel too repetitive. And then we've got half diagonal buildings, which is really impressive too. Yeah, those are uh those were a headache to make. The pagoda was much more difficult, but I was kind of just getting my my feet wet with uh with half diagonal buildings. Here's the half yeah, that one. pagoda. That's nice. Just insane. I try. People are doing. I know. We're all. It's a new meta right now, I guess. Half diagonals. Now we have the World Wonder. So we've got this giant castle. It's almost like Minas Tirith. That's like crazy big. And then what's this kind of coaster flying around it? This would be either a new gen Intamin multi launch or a mock rise style multi launch. Could be either or. Oh, wow. It's really going around everything. And then you got some like floating gr like islands. I didn't notice that. I, I thought most of the islands would have been land texture, but these seem to be just floating on like trees or grass or. Yeah, just, a little just the trees. With uh, I mean, there's there's definitely ways you could do that with the uh, the land. Like if you uh, it's like the tunnel trick, I believe, where you like do some weird stuff with like copying and pasting land on top of each other. But that's a total headache to do, and this is much easier. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna do that. I don't know if I'd call it easier, but it looks really good. Now Those are all the same. Wow. How long did it take you to set all these guys up? <laughs> uh, I'd rather not say. Because <laughs> I didn't get them exactly like right with like the motion too. Because like there's different frames that the, as they're walking, you got to like pause it exactly right. So that was, that was kind of a pain, but definitely worth it, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I really enjoy how each part of the castle doesn't just feel like a big uniform piece. There's little parts and pieces where you can zoom in and be like okay there's a little scene here and then there's a little scene over here so i'm really impressed with that and it looks like yeah, i was trying working to... on magic what, what would you call these interweaving lines is this a magical bridge what's going on with these well it is labeled as magic 
as track a texture. Oh, okay. So, I missed that. <laughs> that's okay. Um, yeah, I was just like, eh, magic, energy. I was like, eh, let's, let's, let's call it magic. And we have a, that is amazing. That's like a painting inside a main hall, a dinner hall. Yep. That's fantastic. How long were you working on this? Six months? The project kind of took some dips and turns where I had to take some breaks, but I started this back in August. There were definitely, I think, two months off, two or three months off where I was either doing RCCs or just taking a break from playing the game. But the castle probably took about 75 in-game years to make. Like, so one at fifth, least. one fifth or one fourth of how much time you spent on this. That's amazing. Thanks, dude, for going through it. it means a lot. Yeah, is there anything else you wanted to point out or talk about before we wrap things up? I don't think so. The only thing that... Um, if you want to go back to Japan, there's just one area that's really cool. Um, there is, yeah, down there, there is an island. There's like, a, yeah, like right there, those like three tiered islands. That's the one. That was pretty tricky to set up, but I do think the effect is pretty cool. And yeah, there's 94. He's got, he's got one of the best scenes in the whole, <laughs> the whole map. How is this made? No, that's amazing. These, the piece usage to make these miniature pagodas is awesome. And then just overall, I I mean, I saw this from far further out, and I was like, how did you make curved waterfalls? But it seems like you're using some void objects to cover up the water itself, and it really comes across as a more natural and organic uh, piece. Yeah, lots of void, lots of void colors. That's mostly the grass uh, from the giant grass or the giant gardens theme, just mm -hmm. void colored. That's fantastic. Well... This is amazing. I think uh, you and all the other people we've gone through did a fantastic job under the guise of a contest. You guys all made something super unique and different, and that's really exciting as uh, another builder who likes to check out contest entries for inspiration. So I appreciate you building this, and uh, thanks for going over it with me. Thanks for uh, hosting me. Really appreciate it, man.